Hi everyone and welcome to my YouTube channel. So we'll be discussing this video, a second international mathematical Olympiad problem, and that is the IMO 2008 problem one. So we're still discussing the substitution strategy and we'll be discussing in this video a very famous trap that lots of Olympiad participants made during the contest. So pay attention to the solution and let's get started. So we are asked to find all functions f from r positive to r positive such that for any positive real numbers p, q, r and s satisfying p times q equals r times s so we have a precondition here so we will get this identity f of p squared plus f of q squared so pay attention here we have the f is squared not p or q over f of r squared plus f of s squared so here we have inside of f is squared equals p squared plus r plus q squared over r squared plus s squared. Okay, so how can we start with this problem? What shall we substitute at the beginning? Well, since we have a precondition here, we should pay attention to it and consider the simplest special case. And that is when p equals q equals r equals x. So uh, equals s. So let's start by substituting everything with x. Okay, so let's substitute p, x, x, x and x. And let's see what will we get. Well, here we have 2 times x squared over 2 times x squared, which is 1. And here we have 2 times f of x and f is squared over 2 times f of x squared. So in other words, we will get the following relation f of x squared equals f of x squared. But here we have the f is squared and here we have x is squared. So this relation actually uh, simplifies this uh, identity because we should not worry about what uh, if f is squared or if r is squared, thanks to this relation. In fact, we can get rid of all the squares in our problem. That's nice, isn't it? But how can we do this? Well, the idea is very simple. Since we have square squared uh, in everywhere, we can substitute with the square roots of p, q, r, and s. This precondition is still correct because if we take the square roots, of both sides it still uh, it still holds and here if we uh, get this squared inside of f thanks to this relation we can get rid of all the square roots so now let's write our equation in a simpler form so by simply substituting p square roots of p, square roots of q, square root of r, and square root of s, we get the following. f of p plus f of q over f of r plus f of s equals p plus q over r plus s and the precondition is still the same when p pq equals r s okay so now we have this simpler form so what shall we substitute now well we have substituted the simplest uh, the simplest case when we have all of them are equal but what about when two of them are equal what, what about when we have p and q are both equal to x? So we have this is x squared. And of course, we're not going to consider the same case. So let's try substituting r with x squared and s with 1. That's the second simplest case, right? So let's substitute now with p x 
x, x square, and 1. And of course, p now is the new assertion of this. So what will we get now? Well, we have in the denominator, we have 2 times f of x divided by f of x. Well, we ha can write f of x square or f of x and the f is squared, which I prefer because now we have only one variable, which is f of x plus uh, f of 1 equals 2 times x over x square plus 1. So now we have this simple uh, relation. But what is the value of f1? Can we find it in a fast way? Well, yes. Since we have uh, f of 1 and 1 is squared is the same as f of 1 and the f is squared, that means that either f of 1 is 1 or f of 1 is 0. But f of 1 is 0 is not accepted because we have f is from r positive to r positive, so it must be positive. And 0 is not positive. So we have f of 1 equals 1. So we can actually here just write 1 instead of f1. So now we have this new relation. 2 times f of x over f of x squared plus 1 is the same as 2 times x over x squared plus 1. Now let's X, uh, let's multiply by x squared plus 1 times f of x squared plus 1 and expand everything. And then, actually, we can write this as the following after factoring. Actually, this is the same as x times f of x minus 1 times f of x minus x equals 0. Actually, you can see this by realizing that f of x equals x uh, is a solution here, and f of x equals 1 over x is also a solution. So that must be factorized as this multiply, uh, multiplication of x, of, uh, x times f of x minus 1 times f of x minus x equals 0. So actually, we have found our function f. How? Well... Now f of x equals either x or 1 over x. Because here we have f of x minus x, and here we have x times f of x minus 1 equals 0. So we must have f of x is either x or 1 over x. Okay, so let's check both cases. Uh, is f of x equals x a solution? Well, p squared plus q squared over r squared plus s square is indeed the same as the right left hand uh, the right hand side what about the second case when we have f of x equals 1 over x well 1 over p square plus 1 over q square is the same as p square plus q square over p times q squared and this is the same we have r square plus s square over uh, r times s squared but since we have p times q equals r times s, so we can cancel p times q squared with r times s squared. And indeed, it is a solution. So actually, our solutions are, if we write the solutions here, uh, f of x equals x and f of x equals 1 over x. So that's our solutions and we're done right and so we're done no 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 we're not done yet didn't, didn't we mention earlier that we have a trap so what is this trap actually all our work was just fine until we said the following f of x equals either x or 1 over x implies that f of x equals x for all real numbers or f of x equals 1 over x for all real numbers. 
That is a wrong conclusion. And the reason is simple. Consider a function f that mix the two cases. So we have f of x equals x for some positive real numbers and f of x equals 1 over x for the rest or the other positive real numbers. Is this a solution? Well, that's what we need to disprove or maybe prove. So let's take a look. So the way we're going to do this or to discuss this by simply assuming that we have two numbers a and b, two positive numbers a and b, such that, so let's assume that we have numbers a and b, such that f of a isn't equal to 1 over a, and f of b isn't equal to b. So now we have mixed cases. So what do we have now? Actually, that implies since f of a isn't equal to 1 over a, we must have f of a equals a. And f of b isn't equal to b, so we have f of b equals 1 over b. Okay? So we have assumed that we have two numbers, a and b, that satisfy this. And we concluded that f of a equals a and f of b equals 1 over b. Okay, and now let's substitute with a and b. So let's substitute, substitute here b with a and b uh, or q with b. And what shall we substitute here? Well, the simplest thing we can do is substituting s with 1 and r with a, b. So let's substitute now p, a, b, and then a times b, and then 1. Now let's see what we will get. So here we are going to have f of a plus f of b, which is a plus 1 over b over f of a, b plus f of 1, which is 1, equal, equals what? a plus b over a, b plus 1. So now we have this relation. And actually, since we have f, f of a times b, we can discuss two cases. Because f of uh, a times b uh, can be equal to, uh, can be equal to two cases. The first one is when f of a times b equals a times b. So in this case, let's discuss the two cases. Okay, here and here. Case 1 and case 2. The, case, the first case is when f of a b equals a b. So in this case, we can cancel a times b plus 1 from both sides. And we can cancel this a. So we are going to have 1 over b equals b, which means that b equals 1. So we will have b is equal to 1. But can we accept this? Well, we have said earlier that f of b isn't equal to b. But f of 1 is equal to 1. So that's a contradiction. So actually, we cannot accept this case. What about the other case when we have f of a times b equals 1 over a times b. So f of a b equals 1 over a b. OK. So uh, we can actually show that, in this case, a equals 1. So in this case, we have a equals 1. But also, notice that f of a isn't equal to 1 over a. But f of 1 equals 1 over 1. So that's also a contradiction. So now we can say that our two solutions are only f of x equals x or f of x equals 1 over x for all real numbers. So now we're done. So the moral of the story in this problem is 1. The substitution strategy is a very powerful strategy that solves lots of Olympiad functional equations by itself. And the second thing is, don't fall in the trap. 
when you have some function is equal to many cases, two cases, three cases, four cases, or maybe more, always consider discussing the cases in the method that we have demonstrated. So you don't lose some uh, marks in the contest. And actually, in the next videos, we'll be discussing other strategies, not just the substitution strategy. We're going to discuss uh, the bijective functions, surjective functions, and injective functions. So like the video, share, and subscribe to the channel, and see you guys in the next lesson. Mm -hmm.